super hot, super hot. You should totally play that game if you haven't played it yet. Anyways, I am Joe from Workbench, and I have a quick tutorial for you guys this week. Let's check it out. So I was working on this guy's face to convert it to a uh, joystick and sliders setup. And if you haven't seen that, go check it out on AE Scripts because it's pretty awesome. Anyway, I was looking at this guy and I realized that there's kind of a tutorial and setup for his arms and his legs. So these are actually stroke paths that are all set with an expression to pick one path and use it for animation. And then all of these things are trim paths on top of it. So let me show you how that works. It's pretty awesome. I think I was looking at some Fraser Davidson characters to see kind of like how he did it. I think he has a tutorial on how he does his characters, but I haven't watched it. I just kind of figured this might be a good way to do it. So let's say I want this to be kind of the base arm, right? So I'm going to pick a skin color. Let's go down to the yellows somewhere in more here color. It's really hard to pick a skin tone. Let's say that. That's good. All right, so I'd want this thing to be rounded caps. So let's say I want a shirt over top of this thing. And the other guy, we have a shirt the same size of his arm, but in this case, I want it to be a little bigger. This is where it becomes a little interesting. So we're gonna take this right here, pick whip this thing. I always put my semicolon on the end because it's hey, programming. And I'm gonna hit enter, oops, not enter. I'm gonna hit the enter on the number pad and it's gonna make the same path. But what we're gonna do here is we're gonna add a trim paths. I'm gonna change the color of this thing so we can see uh, see that it's different. We're gonna give him a nice uh, I'm gonna give him red red shirt. All right, and then not in the stroke in the trim paths, I'm going to pull this back. I want the stroke to be a little wider, and you could leave it at just this with the round uh, end here, but I don't really want that. So what we're gonna do is make another shape, and I'm gonna I'm gonna call this the uh, we're gonna call this shirt and always label your stuff. It seems time consuming at the beginning, but it will definitely pay off when you have to give this to somebody else or if you are going to uh, work on it six months down the line. We'll just call this shirt and I'm gonna set this stroke here to not be round, but cap. So as you can see, it doesn't stick out past it anywhere. So what we're gonna do is go back here to the trim paths and adjust, see, until we cover that up. Um, I will actually bring this back a little bit too, so that it's only covering that portion. Because if you get some funkiness in here, it, it, since that's right at the edge here, otherwise it might make something or whatever. I just, it, I feel more comfortable. It probably won't do it, but. So now you can see as you move it around, shirt follows. And you can do that to add like detail and stuff too. So let's say, okay, he's got a shirt, right? And he's got a cuffed shirt. So this will be a shadow shirt. I'm gonna call it shirt shadow or cuff shadow. Cuff shadow will be a darker version of the red. And now you can kind of see where the other one is. So what we're gonna do here, extend it out. Actually, I'm not gonna extend it. I'm just gonna cut the, cut the front of it a little bit. So we're gonna do that and then duplicate it. Actually, I'm not going to duplicate that one. I'm going to duplicate the shirt since it's already red. Go back to trim paths again. Cut it back in. I'm not going to extend it past it anymore. Well, maybe a little bit. I'll go a little bit. Just in case as it moves, it, it shows through somehow. So you want to overlap a little bit. It's like you're making a screen print or something. And then we go out. Stroke width right there. Boom. So now you can take this whole thing, move it around. Here, let's actually animate it. We'll uh, go over here. I actually made it a lot longer. So you can see it should hold together, but you know, if you want to keep the right size and all. So this allows you to make clothes that form fit stuff. You could even uh, use this for a leg. So you want to make a leg with a foot. So you could go through and do like we did. Have your shape, stroke here. I'm going to change this color again. It's got to be a little more tan maybe, a little bit. And uh, what I'm going to do here is copy this again. 
duplicate that again. So I'm going to call this base. See, I didn't even do that in the last one. I was ignoring my own advice. I uh, leave that path open. Click this. There we go. My semicolon. Okay, so let's take this uh, this thing. We're going to give it the same color red, I guess, maybe. We'll, we'll, we'll give them some, some fuchsia pants here. Why not? So let's make the stroke a little wider. We're going to add our trim paths to this. Bring that back up here. We're going to say these are going to be pants that go to here. All right, maybe we'll do like a little capri action or something like that, right? So now, if you wanted to add something like a shoe, right? You could go back here, set that all the way to the end, set this way down, make sure you cover up just a little bit. Actually, you could do this and then cover up some socks or something else. It's not going to be the most stylish shoe, but for a blocky character, this works. And we're going to change the color of that to maybe like some gray here. You can actually see over black. And then in between, I'm going to make some socks, right? We're going to make that sock, and then uh, we're going to go over here. We're going to set this color to white. And I'm going to move not that, this, misclicked, misclicked. Move that back down there. You can see it's sticking in a little bit, so I'm going to go back here. Bring it down just a little bit, and move it to start down to here. So now you've got that. And if you want, you can actually make the shoe, we'll call it the cap, a little toe cap. Going to go into the stroke, round the cap. But I don't want it on both ends, right? So I'm going to go into my trim paths and move it down until it's just on the end. So there you go, stroke leg. You can move it. that so that's the kind of stuff you're gonna have to watch out for but that kind of looks like a uh, tongue or something for a uh, shoe so there's that and there's even a simpler application for this say you want to have a line let's turn this off right Say you want a line with a round end on one side and it might animate right so we're gonna link the path still I'm going to add trim paths, and I am going to set the stroke to round cap. Now it's going to round both sides, right? But not with trim paths on. Oh, ho, ho. so now you can have a stroke line with uh, different ends on both sides. So I think this is a pretty cool technique. I think there's a lot of uses for it. There's probably stuff I haven't even thought of. There's stuff I didn't even mention, like the shadow and the leg. As long as you can build up different things on, this, on the same line, you can pretty much do whatever you want with this thing. So I think it's pretty cool. So that's it. I am Joe from Workbench. If you have any comments or questions, leave them in the comments down below. And make sure you follow us on workbench.tv for more great tutorials. I'll see you guys again next week. Thanks for watching. Bye.